Hey, this is the one-man gold mine, the one-man enterprise of professional wrestling and all entertainment, Flynn Hendricks. And you better believe when I'm looking for a good podcast to listen to, I go to my own. I go to the I Know You Hear Me podcast hosted by me, Flynn Hendricks. That is such a fresh perspective for how you should look at life, too. Like, I just, I love that. And then when I'm feeling spooky, I go to my other podcast, Tales from the Haunt, where myself, I want my head shoved inside a 15-pound silicone mask more. You know, I want to have a bucket of sweat coming off me at the end of the night. And just Jeff. Dogs don't lay eggs, (laughs) Flynn. I hate you so much. Talk to other scare actors about what it takes to get into the world of scare acting. So if you're curious about how people became professional wrestlers, actors, prioritized their mental health, became entrepreneurs, avoided burnout, or got into scare acting, you need to go check out I Know You Hear Me and Tales from the Haunt, available on all podcasting platforms. And I know you hear me. What's going on, everybody? This is the PWZ Podcast. I am the Professor Rick Del Santo. Joining me, he's back. Showtime, Marcel Williams. Marcel, what's going on? What's going on? We are back here January 20th, 2023. Have we done one in, in 2023? I just want to, like, I've been lost. A two weeks bit. ago. We done one? Yeah, the first. Uh, was it two weeks ago? Was it fifth or something? Yeah, we did. Uh, it was the first week of the New Year, I think. Maybe a second. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Whatever it was. I'd have to look. <laughs> go back and look. But I know we did. We skipped last week. Both of us were having a little uh, little bit of trouble at the end of the uh, night before we hit the went to hit the record button. And uh, I believe I ended up getting home a little bit too late. Uh, I think you did as well. Matter of fact, yeah, we did do a 2023 because I remember I yeah. got into a, uh, a debacle in the, in, in the first week of 2023. So, yeah. I was gonna say happy new year, but nah, it's it's we this new year is just starting off with a a whammy on top of whammies around here. Has it improved at all since the last episode? I know that you were telling me a bunch of random uh stuff uh the last time. Has anything gotten better? No. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I am <laughs> no. It's life, but no. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We're uh, this is the. Uh, I mean, you know what? Uh, to, to to tell the truth, I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. So it it, it does it it you know I, I don't want to put like a dark cloud which we already been having for the last few hours, but uh, I'm just glad to be here. We get to sit here and talk about pro wrestling. Some of the news is not going to be uh, necessarily too happy, uh, but it's uh, wonderful to get together once a week and. Uh, or sometimes twice, whichever, and just talk wrestling. So, yeah, and um, I'm hoping let's let's improve this year. The 2023 is going to be a kick-ass year for PWZ. But um, if you don't mind me, before we jump into the stuff, I just want to say that uh, anybody that's listening that normally listens to this show, sorry, we're late, we're a week late. So, um, I do want to say there's a couple new interviews up on, say, Spotify, YouTube, and Apple. Uh, some. Uh, uh, Indie wrestling legend, uh, King Kalua, an interview, which I uh, I spoke with him for an hour uh, last night. And I have to say it was one hell of an interview. It was a really great guy. Uh, another New England legend, uh, the maniac Jimmy Dio. Great interview. Uh, we went about two hours. So I just want to uh, let everybody know, if you guys remember the old Independence IWCCW, early, early ECW, 1992-93 with uh, Kalua. You guys should go check those out. Uh, they're a lot of fun, and 
you're gonna learn a lot of stuff. I learned a lot of stuff about both those guys. Yeah, Rick Del Santos, my guy. He's been on a busy, uh, busy schedule bringing in the indie stars and all your local and some stars national. So just keep on tuning in for the PWZ uh, content where he interviews these uh, performers and get all the info that you need to know about them. There's going to be, uh, oh yeah, there's a paid in full interview up too that's uh, it's quite entertaining, I should say. They call out Don Kincaid. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> Staying yeah. in line. Yeah. Um, but there is uh, going to be a lot of interviews coming up. I've got about two months booked straight. So February is all set. So um, I'm going to be announcing dates for February probably in the next week or two uh, that are opening up for guests. So, yeah. Cool. yeah. So uh, what is going on in your radar in the wrestling world? I have not watched a whole ton, but I've... Uh, what have you been watching lately? You've been keeping up on uh, AEW and anything else? I've been watching a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Raw, I watched SmackDown last week, or it's Raw this week. Um, yeah. I watched Dynamite as well. Um, caught up on Rampage with that street fight recently with the women. Um, yeah. it's, it's just been a up and down roller coaster, but obviously we had some major news pop up on Tuesday afternoon, which you informed me when you messaged me because I actually was sitting there watching I was watching some of NXT, but I turned it to watch uh, The Last of Us on uh, HBO Max. And when you text me, I seen the message. I said, what? So yeah. obviously, we all know as wrestling fans or I'm in the industry as well, um, locally, usually you, you, you hope that uh, it's false news. You will hope. And then I had to do the look myself and check around, and it was true. And obviously, we got the news of uh, Briscoe, Jay Briscoe. Yeah, 38 years old, uh, dead in a car accident. He uh, was returning from cheerleading practice with his daughters, and I guess it was a two-lane two lane road. Uh, he had a Chevy Silverado, the, uh, the other person. Had a Chevy Silverado, excuse me. I think there were one was 2016, one was 2019. Mm -hmm. Two lane road and the oncoming car swerved, hit him head on, and um, yeah, he's dead on impact. Uh, his daughter was, um, I guess, could not move at all, and she was rushing to surgery in the morning. I have not heard any updates about her, but um, and the other daughter was in critical condition at uh, at that point as well. Yeah, and the other driver um, as well, she was wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. And she was still passed away. But there's still, uh, still unknown reasons why she merged into this lane. So they don't know if alcohol was involved or anything like that. So they still do an investigation, I guess. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit before. Uh, it could have been a deer or anything like that. I mean, uh, I, I just hope that it's... Uh, you know, I pray for his family. I'm very, this Absolutely. really impacted the professional wrestling world. I actually, when this news came out, I was actually, that's when I was in the midst of talking with uh, King Kalua. And about the last 10 minutes of he and I talking, my phone started blowing, literally blowing up. Like people were calling my phone and I just kept getting text message after text message after text message. And I wrapped it up. I looked and, you know, someone texted me, uh, you know, Jay. Jay Briscoe died, so I was like, "Now nah, this isn't... What are you talking about? Yeah. I went to Google. Literally, I could not find any a death report or obit for an article, so I said, this has got to be false news, just like you said. And then I waited a few minutes. I think I went, got a drink, came back to the computer, and I started. That's when I, you know, I went immediately to the Observer, uh, and that's when I saw it, and I was like, holy shit, and I, uh, I shot you a message literally right away. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I seen some of NXT, like the first, probably the first 20, 30 minutes. And obviously, I mean, I give them a hell of a credit because they did it for Don West as we lost him a few weeks ago. Yeah. They, they gave their condolences as well to Jay Briscoe. And it's a different time now, man. Uh, 
now we got a wrestling community that is a family. Yeah. That um that knowledge is their work instead of acting like they didn't know them at all. And um it just I give them hell of credit and just do for sitting there doing that in the middle of an NXT broadcast. I said that he uh was not wearing a seatbelt and the other driver was the driver yeah. in the other vehicle. So um the other thing with that is it's like like you said that's uh the it is a community, it's a brotherhood and sisterhood, etc. And it's just a lot of these guys on TV these days from these days from AEW and NXT and WWE, all these guys came up with the Briscoes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's like it was one of those things where it'd kind of be hard to not ad- acknowledge it on either WWE or AEW uh television. You know, there used to be a thing in the past when WWE would not acknowledge anything outside their company whatsoever. Uh, but they've really grown over the years. So that's the other thing. Well, over the months. We're literally you know, about to go backwards, though. So yeah, um, we'll go into that a little bit soon. Well, but this yeah. is more important. But yeah, well, um, uh, one of the things is I, you know, I had actually voted that uh, the Briscoes versus FTR was my match of the year, the one from uh, Final Battle, the dog collar match. So, uh, which I thought was incredible, incredible match. And the series that they had over the year, they wrestled three times over in the Ring of Honor pay per views. They had. Uh, just some incredible matches. They were probably some of the best matches all year. Yeah, they did. And I was going to be honest. You know, I'm an honest dude. Um, I have heard of the Briscoes before. Um, even when NXT was real hot at the time, they was going to come in for NXT. But obviously, Jay Briscoe says some some controversial things. And yeah. obviously, that set them back. But it didn't stop their hard work. And all their uh, their commitments that they have done in the independent wrestling community. But the thing is with them is um, I'm one of those fans that didn't because I heard a lot of stories about the Briscoes and Mm -hmm. um, from other people and how great they was. And I truthfully seen them rarely in certain situations. But since they faced FTR for the last three times, I was fully uh, introduced to them. And there truthfully was one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Their work was real good as I watched them on FTR. And then I started looking at the earlier work and um, they was good. They could work at any generation. Yeah. I think in the last year to year and a half, they also worked the NWA on their TV while uh, ring of honor was on hiatus. Uh, They had some incredible matches there. Um, You know, it's just, it's one of those things that this is just tragic that the, you know, they were, they were on the radar for WWE for so long. And then it's just one of those things that, like you said, he, some stuff from Jay's past, uh, him tweeting out some stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. The tweets were horrible. Uh, he had come out, you know, it was a different time. And uh, like I said, it was horrible stuff that he said, and he literally apologized. But uh, it was one of those things that where WWE was not going to mess with it, mess with it. Uh, it was as far as like public relations goes and stuff like that. So, you know, they weren't ever going to get to that level. AEW didn't want, to, or it's not that AEW didn't want them. It's Warner Brothers didn't want them, but they, they allowed, um, you know, Tony to bring him into Ring of Honor, which was his, uh, you know, the uh, since con buying Ring of Honor. Uh, so these guys had incredible matches for years and years and years. They've had incredible matches against each other. Um, Jay was a two-time Ring of Honor champion, world champion, and I Oh, geez, I'm trying to remember. who Did he beat his brother for it uh, at one point? That part I, I'm trying to remember. I think, his brother was, I think his brother challenged him for it, I think. Yeah. But, uh, you know, those. I remember the very first time I got to see the Briscoes, and this had to be 2002, 2003, is in TNA. It was like on one of the initial, you know, remember when TNA used to do those live pay-per-views every Wednesday? Yep. They came in. They had these red singlets on. They looked like babies. Uh, they were yes, pretty they much did. clean, clean cut at that at that time. They had shaved heads and and uh, they didn't have the long hair and long beards and matted beards and stuff like that and all the crazy tattoos. They look like two different two different guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but over the years, they really made a name for themselves, working Ring of Honor, the Independence, uh, Japan, all over the place. Yeah, he has. But um, as I said earlier. To you behind the scenes, this is my time to 
to start crucifying people. <laughs> the social media. Um, obviously, he says some terrible things, and I understand that. But the thing is, as I read these articles and hear stories from a lot of people that's close to him, he grown from those controversies. Yeah. He did his he did his research on the uh, the lesbian gay uh, community, and mm -hmm. and you know he really uh, wanted to better himself. He knew he made that mistake. But for social media to keep on crucifying this dude continuously where he couldn't get an opportunity in the big time where he, where he was supposed to be is ridiculous. And as we segue to uh, Dynamite as well, like obviously they, they did the graphic, but Warner Brothers and uh, Discovery didn't want uh, any tribute for this guy. And it's ridiculous because after Dynamite went off, what did you have? A slap show with Dana White on there, who just slapped his wife recently. Let's talk about it. We're going to talk about. It. I'm going to bring that up actually. So I got that here. I'd love to. Oh boy! But we're going to. That's ridiculous. It, I just don't understand that. Yeah. Be, well, Dana White's a piece of garbage. I just said that. You can at me. All right. Look yeah. at that. I'm pulling a line. From, <laughs> I'm pulling one of Marcel's lines. Well, 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 yeah. At <laughs> at at the Rick Del Santo. And at yeah. Showtime Marcel, you can always uh, reach us if you have any issues. Yeah, bring it on. So, yeah. Um, where was I going with this? Well, we, was, we were talking, uh, about, talking the about the slap show. Oh, uh, so <laughs> after that, Tony Khan had basically filmed, the after the show, they filmed a Ring of Honor, filmed a tribute there in the same arena uh, for the Honor Club, for the new version of the Honor Club. And they're going to do one hour uh, tribute to him um and it's going to premiere on the new uh version of the honor club so uh i don't have honor club so i don't know what to say i'd, I'd like to see it and see how they pay tribute they to him. they will they, they yeah. said they will post it on youtube as well okay all right so i'm looking forward to that then if that's the case so yeah um jay rest in peace i'm sorry to uh really uh, the the professional wrestling world really lost a, a really talented professional wrestler you know uh I wasn't like the world's biggest fan at first, but over the years, man, I just got to see these guys and I thought that they were tremendous performers and the world lost a really, really great wrestler. Yeah, they have. And once again, I'm going to give my condolences to the whole uh, family from Jay yeah. Briscoe and friends. And like I said, the wrestling community, but also, I mean, as well as the other driver, she lost, her family lost her as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We can't just uh, put the attention only on Jay Briscoe, the, the lady that was also involved in the accident. We also, she she's also a family member of somebody else that now is lost now. So my condolences to everybody that's involved in that accident is very unfortunate. I hope his kids, his two uh, daughters really recuperate because as we've seen um, with the stories and everything and with the videos, he was real close with his daughters make sure uh, with cheerleading practice and routines and everything. And even with the community, they shut down a school day for him. Um, it's just very unfortunate, man. And just uh, rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. Yeah. They said that he was a very good father and always at the, like you said, that um, him not being signed to the majors really afforded him to be able to be that dad because he was be able, able to come home. A yeah. lot more than he would have been with the uh, AEW and spend time with his kids and that he really, really loved his wife and, and kids and that he was just a great family man. Yeah, I mean, him not getting into the, the WWE was still a blessing because he had extra time with his daughters and there's nothing more bigger than that. Absolutely. Tracy Smothers, Harley Race, Tim Storm, Bushwhacker Luke, Bobby Fool, The Pro, Pro Wrestling, Wrestling Bolt, Bolt, Volume, Volume one. 1, Bill Dundee, Super Mix Hernandez, C.W. Anderson, Ricky Morton, Sir Mo, and many others share their stories of determination, triumph, and, and sorrow. sorrow. Get your book today at Russellville.com or at Amazon.com. Russellville, it's a wrestling bit. Uh, so where are we going? Dynamite, or do you want to talk about the bitch fest? I mean, slap fight. We could talk about the dumbass slap fight. 
You can add that out. <laughs> I heard that. Now, I read today that they only drew just over 12,000 fans. The shit is dead on arrival. Good. Good. Yeah. Now, of course, um, just a couple, what was that, about two weeks back, Dana White, this, uh, TBS was promoting this somewhat heavily, and during Dynamite, it was on during basically every commercial, and then the incident happened about two weeks ago with uh, uh, Dana White and his wife, where he slapped his wife across the face in a bar in Mexico, and guess what, the commercials were pulled, and the television program was pulled. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess over time, they probably couldn't fit something in that could have probably played the 9,000, uh, you know, playing of uh, Big Bang Theory Marathon. Or hey, they could have played with, that. They could have played the Law and Order. Yeah. Well, I take that back. That's USA. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's like 9,000 of uh, Law and Order shows, too. There is. <laughs> but they decided to put the show back on, and it was atrocious. So Dana White was all over it. It's just... Do you see these people that are up here? Slapping? This is a sport of the future, apparently. Maybe not, yeah, because there's yeah. only 12,000 people. But um, this shit's embarrassing, dude. It is embarrassing. Did you see the, the TikTok where the dude got slapped so hard, like his face swelled up? His face was already yeah. swelled up. But it just like I guess it must have numbed up or something. I don't know what the hell that. Yeah. But he won the fun. He won the uh, damn. I'm about to curse on here. everybody. Be uh, barred from YouTube. This show is uncensored, isn't it? I thought it was. I thought it was. Yeah. But uh, he ended up winning the slap fight after that. After his face was swelled up. Did you see that? I think that if I, if it's the one that you're referring to, I believe the guy actually broke his jaw from getting slapped uh, a couple times. Did so. it? Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised that it was broken because yeah. like his whole face from here he going looked down. Was, yeah. yeah, he was done. Yeah, but um, this... Dumb sport, though. This is dumb. I, how it's considered a sport's beyond me, but, you know, this is like one of those things you're sitting in a bar in the middle of uh, the night. Before the bar closes, you guys just challenge each other, each other to a slap fight. I've had, uh, I probably drink a pitcher of beer. You drink a pitcher's worth of beer. Let's try to do this, it, right? It's just, it's uh, the ridiculousness of this, uh, of this. It's, it's just crazy. Well, if if, if people uh, is around my age, no, there was a uh, radio station that still is pop that still is popular today. It's a uh, hip hop, uh, Hot ninety seven. Oh, I, I know that station. Yeah, and they used to do Smack Fest. Oh, man. And that, that's where I remember it from. I guess it must have transitioned into a, a, a worldwide sport of slapping. So that's how I remember it when it first started. Really? Yeah. They, uh, I think that, I mean, they got a lot of um, foreign competitors in this, too. So my guess is that it had to have started elsewhere as well. <clears throat> this had to be pretty popular. I guess they had... I can't think, but this guy was walking around with his damn flag and very proud of his country and yelling it out and stuff like that. And I'm just like, did you see uh, the the venue that it was in? What it looked like? No, I didn't see it. It looked like uh, it looked like it was a convention kitchen. hall or something. <laughs> no, it looked like it was like a convention hall or something. So it was basically standing room only looking place where it was like you know just hundreds of people on the floor standing. And then just to watch like uh, a, a weigh-in type setting, like on the stage, and where they're just slapping each other across the face. Hey, if it's the thing, if it's the thing, and people will watch somebody. Say, hey, listen, if they go watch us wrestle and entertain them. We can watch people boxing, UFC. Trust me, they'll watch somebody slap each other three or four times. That's different. Come on, I mean, <laughs> I I just the world would want to be entertained. Unfortunately. Yeah, well, they're going for the cheapest shit possible. Now, this, I thought it was really bad with all the reality television about a pregnant young girl or, a, you know, was a 16 year old, some crap, whatever that show was. Teen Mom, that's what it is. Uh, I'm about to make up a sports one. I got yeah, a heel. I got a heel on my street right here. All we got to do is get into like one of these uh, shopping carts and see who hit the rock first over here. I'm at, game. At, at, at. 
I'm game. As long as I can be the, I'll film it. We'll post it to YouTube. <laughs> and maybe we'll get 10,000 views. Uh, maybe we'll maybe. get Dana involved. We'll get maybe. Dana yeah. It's going to hurt, but maybe. <laughs> Well, so you see some of these guys though that got that were doing the slapping or getting slapped. Like some of them, some of them got knocked not out, loopy. Like yes, this dude done. was just, and I'm just like, holy shit! Like how hard did he slap this dude? I just, I, just I seen one dude get slapped. He didn't know what round he was in. <laughs> this one dude like literally just fell back, or like he got hit and he was just like stepping backwards. And he went to go fall, and all the people standing behind him had to catch him before he landed. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. it's a crazy sport. But I mean, for them to sit here and make sure that they don't do a tribute for Dre, Jay Briscoe is ridiculous to me after they just sat here. It was crazy because I was watching Dynamite last night, it popped on right after. As <laughs> soon as like five seconds it popped on, Dana White was right there. I was like, damn, that's crazy. No punishment for Dana White, none. Yeah, none. He didn't. Get, he probably had to pay a fine or pay off, uh, you know, whatever. And then everybody takes the money these days, right? Everybody. That's listen. That's 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 how you, that's how you get by. Yeah. Did you hear the news about uh, what's it? Rita Chatter Chatterman, the lady. Yeah, Rita, Rita Chatterman uh, yeah. got a settlement money, and uh, yeah. she's a baller now. Yeah. From Vince McMahon over for uh, what is it? Uh, the supposed rape. Oh, I don't want to say it like that, but the rape case from twenty plus years ago, or from what it has to be close to thirty years now, right? Yeah, in the nineteen eighties, they had settled out of court, and he had paid her. And all while this is happening, Vince is still sitting high in his office at uh, Titan Towers. Yeah, she actually asked for a settlement of eleven point. Something million dollars, and that did, that did not happen. He basically gave her a settlement of an undisclosed amount. Um, I let me don't see know. If I can find, let me see if I can find the figure here. Keep going. Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, I mean, I, I'm glad she got some justice. I mean, truthfully, you would think that she would want some justice if you want somebody behind the bars that uh, right. that raped you. But uh, Vince McMahon agrees to multi million dollar settlement with a rape accuser, Reader. Chatterton. Uh, McMahon claimed the settlement was made to avoid legal costs. Let's see if I can mm-hmm. find the amount. Just as multi-million. Okay, here we go. Chatterton won't get the $11.75 million in damages she initially was looking for, but the exact amount she agreed upon is unknown. Yep. You want to take a guess? I'm really bad at guessing. Would you go with uh, nine thousand, nine million? Excuse me, I just said nine thousand. <laughs> Yo, at us for real, at us. We about to get million? in. I mean, I, well, eleven point um, eleven point seven five million. That's uh, I mean, you'd think that he would have. I don't know. It's really hard to predict, man. I would say five million. Yeah, five million. Okay, I'd say five million. It, you think he paid dis- her all up front? It'll be disrespectful if I say a million. I think yeah. probably about five million. Okay. You think he sent it through Venmo? If he sent yes. it to Zell, he fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's the issue, right? Through with uh Zelda just I use Zell probably on a all day, the time. weekly basis. Yeah, I send yeah. money to uh to uh my wife, my father, and vice versa, and I pay my uh pay sometimes you can I can pay some of my bills through there. It's just one of those things that uh, I went to, I opened up, you know, today's payday. I went to open up my bank account and uh, I went to go send my dad a couple dollars. And I saw like the message. It's like, if it, you, uh, what was it? If you used Zelle between this date and this date, you had trouble with it posting. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I don't recall that. Nobody ever said anything to me. So I just find that crazy. The thing is with Zell, and I already knew it before everything even happened, that they yeah. are not liable for anything that happens to Zell. So I mean if you send uh five thousand dollars, you're not getting it back. You're not getting it like, back. So that's why I always double check when I send this stuff to Zell. I have to quadruple check. All right. I got a story for you. You ready? Shoot. I take screenshots of every receipt that after I send it though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just so I have it on file. 
I used to, I sent uh, $3,500 to my landlord at one point last year. He says that he got the message that it, um, that he received it, but it never went into his account. It literally took days. I spent days on the phone with my bank, which they were like, uh, we can't do anything about it. It's, uh, it's a Zelle is a separate company. So they gave me the number to Zelle and they couldn't really do much. They had to wait. And I was just like, they see the, saw the transaction, but they didn't see it go into the guy's account. Exactly. Tell me that's not fucking crazy. Over probably within a two to three day span afterwards, we had uh, talked to the gentleman and he said that everything eventually ended up getting cleared up and it, it went in there. So tell me that's not crazy though. I, that, we were freaking crazy. out on our end, man. We were freaking out. I seen um TikTok recently. Um, this lady she sent two thousand dollars of her rent to to the wrong person on Zell, and what happened was she sat there and contacted the person on Zell. Was like, listen, like I sent this to you by mistake. Can you? Uh, I guess she was trying to do a reversal. The guy yeah. declined. <laughs> he wouldn't... declined to send it back, and then now that like. She contacted Zelly. I think she contacted Zell and she contacted um, she contacted the bank, and both of them said they couldn't do nothing about it. That's she insane. can't even do a police report. That's insane. That she guy had, that guy was eating lobster and steak that night, and that was his wine. income tax to come early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more. I got another great story. Before we get back into uh, into the wrestling, it was one day. I was selling some stuff online for a while. And so, you know, people for a while, uh, getting uh, money in PayPal was not necessarily a weird thing. All of a sudden, I got this message one day. This guy was like, hey, listen, I just sent you $400 by accident. <laughs> he's like, he's like, because we had done a transaction earlier in the week. I was selling a bunch of my old wrestling merchandise. He's like, uh, I sent it to you by accident, and I clicked the wrong name and click send. So, you know, I was lucky enough. I was nice enough. I was like, well, he paid for his other stuff. So I eventually just reversed it. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, so, I, and like $2,000 are good, but like, come on, people got yeah. lies, man. You can't just take it. That's messed up. It is. It is. Um, all I got to say is if you do something like that, you're going to get it back to you at some point. You know, oh, it's going to come back. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get it in, bit in the ass at some point. All right. So we let's thought talk about dynamite. About it. Dynamite was okay. It was all right. It all wasn't right. Um, my favorite show, but they definitely had some good moments. Obviously, they opened up with the. Uh, they weren't allowed to do this gigantic tribute to Jay as we had uh, spoke about earlier. But they opened up with a gigantic graphic uh, screen. You know, uh, rest in peace, etc. And they had uh, they had acknowledged him, and then the. Uh, at some point, they showed the Young Bucks. Everybody had the uh, Jay Briscoe armbands yes, they uh, did. throughout the show to help pay tribute. Uh, while they weren't necessarily allowed to speak a whole ton about him, Excalibur, uh, sure as hell, put Jay Briscoe over throughout the show. Yeah, he did. If, if they wasn't going to show it on, on uh, TV, he made sure he uh, did his tribute yeah. to his words. Absolutely. Uh, I think that he knew him quite well through Pro Wrestling Gorilla, if I remember correctly. Yes, he has. There's a. It's mostly AEW. That, mostly everybody in AEW mostly hung around with Jay Briscoe, and yeah. mostly had great matches with him. So it was expected that that, that they got this tribute in, tribute in. But obviously things change. I follow what the network does because they pay that million dollars. Yep. Over what seventy billion dollars? I think. What's, what's the count? That's I have no. How clue. much? Uh, how much Warner Brothers paid him? Paid who for what? AEW for television. Oh, I have no clue. They're I think it's almost up. seventy million dollars. Yeah, so but the not... person that's that's paying you seventy million dollars, you got to follow what they say. Sure. Yeah, you do. You do. I, mean, <laughs> I think it was kind of messed up that uh, Warner wouldn't just let it go for a special tribute for a very special fallen wrestler. I fully agree. Yeah. So we opened up with the All Atlantic title. I still hate this belt. I still hate the name <laughs> of it. 
Uh, <laughs> Orange Cassidy defeated Jay Lethal. The beginning of the match, Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Duck came through the crowd. And Dan Housen came up from behind them and asked for their tickets. I did laugh at that. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought this was a pretty decent match. I think that uh, uh, Orange Cassidy has grown on me over the years. He's proven that he's n not just a gimmick, that he can actually wrestle. Jay Lethal is Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal. Like, what could we say? We can't say anything bad about him. And he's been in the business just over 20 years now and phenomenal worker, phenomenal performer. And I got to say that I'm happy that uh, Jeff Jarrett is in AEW. I really am. I think that uh, a lot of people give him a lot of shit, a lot of flack, but he's there to help teach these guys how to put on a TV show and put on a performance and make people care. And I think that so far he's doing a pretty damn good job at it. Yes, he has. I fully agree. Um, I wasn't. I'm, I wasn't too much of a Jarrett hater when he came on. I was just like, this guy just be everywhere. Like he, he, yeah, he, knows, I, he knows how to do business. Like it's like that's one hundred percent. He does. He does. He knows how to do business. Um, and that's good. That's good for him. And he, like you said, he's everywhere. And I just think that there is a certain crowd out there that just thinks that he's ridiculous or he's that lackey or he's the guy that wouldn't get rehired by WWE back in the day. And so he had to uh, form another company, TNA. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. He, uh, But I think that Jarrett is born into this industry. He knows this industry. Uh, and he just he knows to put uh, asses in seats. And he knows how to write stuff out. He just, he's just a, he, he's a wealth of knowledge for the professional wrestling world and he's old school. So he, the, the, the uh, fountain of knowledge is just amazing with him. Yeah, it is. And this whole um, connection between him and Jay Lethal has been a very uh, underrated, uh, yeah. underrated team. Hopefully that will get a uh, little push later on down the line. Because, I hope so. Uh, these two are real great. With Sanjay with the pencil and Singh being a muscle, it's it's just great, great TV, and I enjoy this opener. Orange Cassidy has, uh, I mean, I want to say he grown on me. I already knew he was good just by the first few matches he had, but mm -hmm. I think that match that he had with Will Ospreay last year really solidified how good he was. That was it for me. Like I knew he was. It was Jericho really for me uh, in the beginning when he mm -hmm. had that feud with Jericho. Because at that time, I was just like, this guy is just, the gimmick sucks, blah, blah, blah. Then he got in there with Jericho. Jericho put him over. And with the exception of the orange juice match, whatever that was, the, uh, you know. The but mimosas. They were, yeah, the mimosas. But they were able to put on really great matches together, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, obviously, the post-match, the Singh jumped in to attack best friends. And uh, Sanjay Dutt put a stop to it. And uh, they just sat there in the middle of the ring with the popcorn at the end. That's it. Yeah, that was it. And then the video package with Darby Allen hyping up his main event match with Kushida. Yeah, I started noticing uh, with the um, since the changeover. I don't know if it was the guy that they brought in that used to work with NXT, but I think it was before that they started doing more video packages that hype up certain matches that's coming yes. up or certain stars that they want to reintroduce to you. I mm -hmm. like that stuff because before there was no one. Yeah, you're right. I think that that guy, I don't remember who the hell it is, though, but he is uh, doing a very good job at doing what he's doing. And maybe that's something that AEW really needed. Absolutely. So we had Top Flight, Darius and Dante Martin defeating the AEW, uh, the part of the trio's champions, uh, the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. this is, uh, I was surprised. Uh, the crowd kind of went a little bit crazy and did not expect this uh, win. I expected it. These two have been going on a little losing streak for the last two rampages. Um, obviously, they covered the Young Bucks in this match where they said that they've been working trio matches for the last uh, few months. So right. they kind of covered them of being rusty, being a tag team. But this yep. match was a really good match, and I enjoyed it. A little tribute to the Briscoes as well in between. But um, tag team wrestling at its finest. It was solid. It wasn't. It could have been better. But it was solid for what it was. You said tag team wrestling at its finest and the Young Bucks in the same conversation. Anyways. 
Sorry. God. Um, we had the gun. What's that? I, I, I mean, young bucks know how to work, man. They know how to work. When they want to work, they can work. You know that. Come on. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm not going to be gonna Jim Cordell and act like they don't know how to work. When, when it comes down to brass tacks and when they want to work, like, when, when, listen, when I seen them work with FTR and a few other teams that don't do the crazy stuff, they know how to yeah. work. That's just like Kenny Omega. I seen Kenny Omega sit here and work with somebody that don't do half the stuff that he wants to do. And he worked a regular basic match. Because they could work basic and just they choose not to. That's the way of the world. That's the way of the wrestling world. Yeah, I get you. You do have a point. I think Kenny Omega is a phenomenal performer, uh, with the exception of wrestling a nine-year-old girl or a blow-up doll. But yes, since coming, Remember we you know, about the past, you can't be talking yes. about the past. Guy. You can't keep talking about the past unless you bring you're, up the past. Yes, I mean you um, can, but you can't do that to sit there and keep it up with Kenny Omega. Yeah. You understand no, he I wrestled like- blow-up. I like Kenny Omega. I think that he had a tear in Japan. Like he ripped up Japan and he was awesome. And I think he's doing a great job in AEW. Not, I don't think he's really doing the comedy stuff or the ridiculous stuff. He could go out there and put on a really, really, really good match in, in uh, any time at a moment's notice. I think his championship run was real underrated. His AEW championship run. I think a lot of it was real good. From, I enjoyed it. Suffered, well, he suffered from injury for a lot. Of it, yeah. you know what I mean. He was suffering vertigo and an injured neck and stuff. So, yeah. All right. So we had the Gun Club came to the ring and said that the acclaimed are embarrassed or embarrassed them last week, uh, despite being the ones who made the acclaimed champions by giving them their dad. The acclaim interrupted as Austin yelled to cut their music, which got heat, got huge heat from the Fresno Fresno crowd. I can't even pronounce Fresno anymore. <laughs> Uh, Max Caster told him to cut Austin's mic and hit the music as he freestyled about how the gun, the guns are worse sons than, <laughs> ready, than Hunter Biden and aren't the Bulldogs, they're the bullshitters. So, and the brawl ensued with both teams and daddy ass separated them both. So next week they need to sit down and hash it out. And that's it. Excuse me. Sorry. Yarn doing this. Yarn, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I kind of feel like uh, Billy Gunn is gonna turn on them. You think? I hate to really? be that guy. I okay. think so. I think I think it was a whole plan just to get titles on his son. Gonna play it like it's a ruse the whole time that he's been mm-hmm. there. All right. Yep. Okay, it's very possible. You might be right on that. This. Come on, uh, he's he's their sons. He like he's their father. Yes. One hundred percent. I was, you know, I mean, I mean, it had to happen eventually. They or they had to get back together with uh, Billy Gunn eventually, right? Absolutely. There might be something where, um, what is it that uh, maybe they claim turn on him, and then the, the guns uh, save him or something like that. Nah, hey. that w- no, that that, no. that wouldn't right. work. All right. I don't know. You never know. Nah, you don't want them as baby faces. Not, nah, you know. you it, would, it would turn them it baby could be faces. Hills. It could be hills, but yeah. they're on a hot run right now. Yeah. It's funny because the guns weren't really treated seriously when they first came in. They were kind of just like on AEW Dark a lot. And yeah. then now they're like ripping it up in uh, on Dynamite. Hey, they grown. They grown. They yeah. matured. They're, yeah. they're good, solid workers. I have seen their work and they got to yeah. win over FDR. So, I mean, <laughs> they're already number one contenders in my book. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, Renee Paquette was backstage interviewing Hangman Page and asked how he's feeling physically. Page said he's uh, stuck to his word. And uh, when he said he's going to knock Moxley out for mocking what happened to him following their first match. Yeah, we never talked about last week Dynamite. What you thought of that match from last week as we do a little speed uh, segue? I don't remember if I watched it. No, I did. Maybe. It was all right. Yeah, right. Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I told you how I felt about both of these competitors. I did. I'm tired of Moxley. I'm tired of Paige. But if I went off and gave my opinion, there's a lot of times I'm just like, eh. So I'm about to bust your bubble. Oh, God. 
What Jim Cor- Jim Cornette actually liked it that match. No. Well, I haven't listened to the Cornette podcast. I'm surprised because he's always making fun of both of these guys. Yeah, yeah, he does, but he really enjoyed this match. See, I don't have to agree with him all the time. I said I agree with 98%. <laughs> of what he says. So there goes your 2% right there. So it's a fun fact as we continue with this dynamite since Jim Cornette critiques everything for AEW. I didn't yeah. even know that he liked it one of the matches that Tony Khan produced. Produced really? That's yeah. Surprising. So 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 there was a match with um Will Hobbs versus Darby yep. Allen, mm-hmm. and he said that uh, he loved that match. It was a real good match. It showcased both wrestlers, and I found out like the other day that Tony Khan produced that whole match. Is he coming around, Jim? Maybe. Well, I don't think he knew that. Tony Khan yeah. produced the whole match. I think he thought somebody else produced the whole match. So, I mean, um, I mean, because he usually doesn't have a lot of positive to say about uh, Darby because he's, what's he do? He's like a daredevil, really, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But that's my Jim Cornette uh, segue, uh, quick segue during this uh, current dynamite. But I just want to ask you how was your thoughts on that, that uh, Kia form event? All right. So, like, I like, both, I told you how I felt about Moxley. I think the last show we did together, like I was a big fan of his, and then it just turned a thing where it's just one of those things where it's the same thing over and over. There's always blood. There's always this and that, and it's just got tiring to watch after a while. Paige, I thought was going to be future of the business as well. I thought he was phenomenal when AEW was starting. I mean, not that I didn't see him before, but you know what I mean. On American television, coming in, making him a star. Just one of those things where I just like. I just lost interest in him because I felt like his title run wasn't all that great. It just kind of fizzled, man. Like the 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 love for him just fizzled. I agree. I yeah. agree with you. So, see, we and agree. sometimes that that it just sometimes affects it. How even us podcasters or critics uh, just feel about how we actually see them on television too. I mean, we don't have to just give them my honest opinions, like. I just really didn't don't have much interest in. I mean, I'm going to watch the show because it's on the show. You know what I mean? But it's going to do something that's really knocked me. I guess knock my socks off. I guess you could say and say, "Hey, this was fucking great." So, but Hangman me- did. Uh, Hangman did lay a little C, saying that he got to uh, make up with a few people. Yeah. So you, you think he's going to make up with the the elite? It's very. It's, it's possible. Do you think? Do you think they're regretting that they uh, they broke them up? No, no, no. They 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 had to tell that story. So okay, somebody always comes around, you know. Yeah. Uh, from there, we had Ricky Starks defeating uh, Jake Hager. Uh, this had that picture in picture bullshit. So I I get distracted in the picture in picture and. Everybody does. Yeah, it's just I. Uh, they want you. Oh, you can't miss a minute of the action. So we're gonna do this picture in picture shit. Guess what? I just missed about two minutes of action because I was watching the fucking commercial. <laughs> Where else today? You're right. You're right. You're right. I can't. I mean, I. I mean, that was all done. Better. I mean, I mean, truthfully, that was all done because when we had an NXT versus AEW war, they made sure you don't click off, but. Yeah, I thought it would stop by time, uh, you know, NXT moved to Tuesdays, but I guess no, because still- everybody's doing it now. It's not just uh, AEW. A lot of people are doing it now, yeah. and it's one of those things where it's just so freaking frustrating because it's they do it during the main event. It's the fucking main event too, man. Like you do, you do. They do it all the time during the main event. Like load up on all the commercials, have the match, the co-main, load up all the commercials there, so you could actually show. All the freaking, all the match. So people don't sit there and I'm tuned out. So guess what? They still get the rating because nobody actually tuned out of because of the match. But it's just distracting. You're right. You're right. I agree with you. Yeah. Otherwise, it was all right. Ricky Starks won with the spear. He's, he's on a streak right now. I see they're trying to push all these young stars. The next, the next, uh, the next people in line, and uh, I'm enjoying this Ricky Starks push right here. Me too. I've said it uh, a while back. I said I think that uh, 
he is the next big thing in professional wrestling. I think he's going to be a major star, and I think he definitely, definitely has the appeal to go the mainstream route as well to do to be recognized outside of the world of professional wrestling. I agree with that. Just saying, um, you know, he he's got the look, he's got the charisma, he's got the 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 verbiage. He talks very well. You know what I mean? The way he he uh, cuts promos, and uh, he's just going to be a big star. Whether it be, you know, he could be a big star in professional wrestling and move on, or what have you, whatever. Either yeah, way. I agree with that. Did you see the Tony Schiavone backstage with Jericho, Garcia, and Sammy Guevara? Yes, I did. What did you think of this? <laughs> Typical Jericho stuff. And, you know, Guevara yeah. and, you know, trying to uh, give Garcia some leather pants to wear. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. It, it was funny. Promotion for, yeah, it was funny. It was just promotion for a rampage. Um, yeah. Another topic, too, as we do a, a little quick segue before we get to the probably match of the night. What do you think could make Rampage better? A different time slot. That's one. Okay. That's not only. That's not the only thing. Put it on earlier. Don't put it on up against SmackDown. That's That'd be just stupid. It's Friday nights at, what, 10 o'clock? Nobody's home at 10 o'clock on Friday nights for the most part. People are leaving their house around 10 o'clock to go out. People, I wouldn't say our age, but people in the 20-something-year-olds. I mean, we're, we're just waiting to fucking get home and lay on the couch or some bullshit at our age. Um, <laughs> am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, so, that's the, you got it right, though. Put it on at 7 o'clock, okay? Yeah. Put it on at 7 o'clock. What else just... Give it something. I mean, I know it's only an hour, okay? Don't record it after uh, Dynamite. That's another thing that, that, that could fail. A lot of times they record it after Dynamite. Mm. So guess what? Half the crowd leaves, and they're fucking miserable. The half the, and the rest of the people that are still there are tired as hell from sitting through a, a taping of Dark and a two-hour Dynamite. So they're not really enthralled or uh, electrified by anything that's happening on Dynamite. On top of that, they should just uh, create some sort of storylines that go through. I don't know. I don't think that you should make it like a WCW Saturday Night where it's all just squash matches or anything like that. But have storylines that are exclusive to that or just carry stuff over that's actually meaningful. That's going to make it meaningful. Have better matches. Build the better matches on there. I was listening to other podcasts. They were saying how in the beginning where they made Rampage. Rampage was starting to be good and started yep. phasing out like Dynamite a little bit. Yep. But I guess it kind of flipped over where it was like, okay, Dynamite is our bread and butter. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like they should do just like Saturday's night main event. Just have a, a big main event with a big stars. And then if you want to put two matches or squash matches, you can I right. mean, or have two, uh, have an opener, a real good opener, yeah. a real good main event, and have a squash in between, which they was doing in the beginning, which I don't understand, but um, I don't know. Well, the one thing is that it's just, uh, they always say, they hype up, oh, it's going to change, we're going to make it better and have better matches, et cetera, et cetera, and that last one week and then bullshit. The rest yeah, absolutely. Of it, you know what I mean? So it's like they try to get you to tune in, being like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Have matches that people care about. Use talent that you're not using. They have 900 people on their fucking roster. That's bring, legit. Up, bring up Brian Cage. Okay? Why? That's legit. Why? That's, that's Why? legit. They got 900 people. Yeah. No, I don't. one of these days we should sit here and go through the fucking roster. All right? That might take us two hours right there. It may. Yeah, yeah it may. Can we do like who would we delete and who would we? Keep? Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, I guess we'd probably cut it down to about two hundred people, really. But. <laughs> Everybody's but like, fired. But like seriously, though, they got guys like Brian Cage, who's a great, great wrestler. Uh, well, great for a guy his size. He could actually put on entertaining matches, and they never use him. You know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of dis disappointing. 
So, all right. So then we had Brian Danielson defeating Bandito. This match, of course, it's Brian Danielson and Bandito. So, what do you think? They're going to put on a shitter. This match was fucking amazing. That's all it I'm saying. It was great. It was yeah. great. It was a great match. Um, it was counter at the counter. Um, yeah. Storytelling. There's been a lot of negativity saying Bandito does nothing but spots with certain podcasters. Uh, but this match right here was storytelling. These two was great. Who was um, that? Hope Rope Report said that? Was it? Was it? I don't know. You said certain podcasters. I thought maybe I said certain was... podcast. I mean, oh, I didn't right. say no names. I didn't drop no names. Was it oh, Top right. no. Go ahead. Well, well, we'll talk later. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but this match was match of the night. I enjoyed it. The story continues with Brian Danielson uh, continuing to face all these names and um, these up and comer names. Bandy was not up and comer, but. You know, the fan favorites of the indies, and um, he's making classics out of them. So I'm enjoying it. I think that Brian Danielson in the last, what, I mean, he's always put on phenomenal matches. Let's not, you know, take anything away from him. Mm-hmm. Since his program with MJF has uh, started, mm-hmm. uh, and he's got on this, uh, if he loses, he doesn't get the match storyline. He's been out there putting on bangers yes, every single match, just sitting out there. I think it's some of the best work he's done. Literally, he's putting on match after match. It's just this is the reason why Brian Danielson's uh, one of my favorite wrestlers in the last twenty years because he can come back and do stuff like this. I mean, to me, he's truthfully like the the Bret Hart of uh, yes. modern era. Yes, a he's the Bret. He, he's the Bret Hart of the modern era. This guy perfect. goes out there and yeah. does storytelling. And you just want him to win and be the best, be the best that he could be. And uh, fans are going to cheer him if he's a baby face. Fans are going to boom if he's a heel. He knows how to work a crowd. He knows how to work a camera. Mm-hmm. He knows how to cut a promo. He can just he can go for an hour, probably longer if he really wants to. Mm-hmm. The guy's just like the guy's great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what did you think of the MJF promo following this match? It was a little bit confusing. I yeah. mean, he's talking about he's going to be aggressive now and take off his mask and all that stuff. I'm just waiting to get to the uh, the hour Iron Man match because I'm I'm sure that's going to be very entertaining because I'm sure MJF could wrestle an hour, but I'm sure it's going to be sh- some shenanigans in it. Have you seen the way uh, MJF looks? These days, underneath uh, that shirt and stuff, the dude Shredded. has gotten himself into shape. So whether he is uh, that guy, I think, has been really getting ready for an Iron Man match. To be honest with you, so he looks like he's getting ready. And if anybody can pull it off, I think that he's one of the guys that's going to be able to. I've never seen him go an hour. Well, what are those cage matches that he did? Uh, that was just about an hour, right? But that was multiple people in it. The uh, mm-hmm. blood and guts, whatever. Blood and guts, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where where this goes. Well, let's see. Let's see with this Soraya. There's a uh, backstage uh, talking shit to her, co- <laughs> to Karo Shida. Shida, yeah, yeah. For throwing a kendo stick in the ring during her and Tony Storm's tag match last week. Storm says she'll beat Willow tonight as Soraya ordered Sheeta to stay backstage. She was really aggressive with it, too. That was, that was, you already knew what it was. Yep. 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 Uh, speaking of which, hang on, let me go back here. Click my notes. All right. We, uh, Brian Cage is going to face Brian Danielson next week. There you go. We just brought up Brian, Dan, uh, Brian Cage. So they're bringing him in to face Brian Danielson, which could be a good match. It's uh, a real Cage, good match. Yeah. Cage is a more than capable worker. He's a uh, pretty beat, beat uh, like big. So mm-hmm. it could be a, it's going to be one of those big man, small man matches, but I think that Danielson and Cage can definitely be able to pull something great off. Yeah. They're starting to put on these instant classics every week. Now dynamite is starting to be a, a, a very good show every week. Yeah. Maybe that has something to do with uh, some certain people coming in Jarrett and that producer we were referring to earlier that they're just putting their heart into it and improving the show overall. Exactly. The fact that I get to see Willow Nightingale on TV every week as well is also a uh, bonus. Yeah, she's a great talent, great addition to AEW, and 
have proven her stake in the company. But yeah. uh, this match was solid, and um, Tony Storm with the win. It was very controversial. But yeah. obviously, we got a, a news at the end. Yeah. So Ryan, so wanna, uh, Tony Storm, he'll turn. Yeah. Which, uh, like you said, we saw that coming. I mean, it was expected. I mean, you had Britt Baker yeah. and Jamie Hader getting cheered. And, you know, obviously the Soraya uh, experiment wasn't working as mm -hmm. a baby face. And uh, Tony Storm obviously got the heat from everybody thought, you know, some Mercedes going to make appearance. So it already gave her some heat already. So, yeah. Um, a yeah. lot of people went crazy when Soraya first came in. And then the following week, people could, could, could uh, care less about her, you know, yeah, as she, time she, went on. She messed yeah. that up. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Renee Paquette uh, backstage with Takeshita and asked him about his match with Danielson last week. Takeshita says he uh, respects Danielson so much and said something in Japanese. And uh, Paquette asked uh, what it meant, and he said MJF is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is another one. He's great. He's going to be at Northeast Wrestling, I believe, uh, in March. Nice. And I believe that's uh, a Bethany, Connecticut show. So maybe Marcel's uh, going to be working at, uh, I don't know. Maybe we should, uh, no? All right. Anyways. Uh, all right. I'm trying to motivate you here, all right? You, you're you trying. You're trying. trying. I appreciate that. This is no alcohol talking, so I'm just <laughs> I appreciate being that. straight up. I've, I've uh, had less than a half a beer. All right? It's hard to get off the couch, you know? Yeah. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Uh, main event time, Darby Allen defeated Kushida. Kushida came out in his fucking jacket time gear. The fucking Marty McFly vest and, gla and uh, Back to the Future 2 glasses. Yeah, he did. You couldn't just try to... I mean, like, when Kenta came in, the guy rebranded himself. Come on. That's his gimmick. This was a great match. Okay. It was Kushida, a match. Kushida is... Proves that since being off uh, NXT and besides doing what he was doing, that he has not lost a fucking step. No, nah, he hasn't. And, um, you know, I'm glad he's he's off NXT 2.0. Yeah. Because I'm not even going to poo-poo in the old NXT because he was doing good on there. But, yeah, um, yeah he, I kind of feel like the crowd was into it as possible as we was because they've never seen Kushida like yeah. that for the AEW crowd. So I kind of feel like it was different, but this was a good technical match with Darby Allen involved. Obviously we see him do crazy stuff, but obviously he has amateur wrestling background. So yes. it made it even better, better. So I enjoyed this main event. Darby Allen is working hard with this uh, TNT championship, which a title that I can't stand. I'd rather take the all Atlantic instead of that. If they took the, what is it? The TNT title? Why can't they just change it to the television title back like WCW and NWA had? Right? You would say. I mean, instead of calling, because it's specifically branded for the, which, okay, I get it. It doesn't seem like they're leaving. Well, what happens if uh, AEW does leave? TV Thank you. Story? What are they going to go to NBC? They're going to have the NBC title? Exactly. You should have. You should have just made a regular TV title and a women's yes. TV title. You went straight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, that wraps up Dynamite. It was a very good show for the most part. Uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, AEW Rampage this Friday, which is uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. We've got Daniel Garcia taking on Action Andretti. Uh, Eddie Kingston's going to speak. Brian Cage taking on Willie Mack. Congratulations, Willie Mack. Seeing him in AEW is very exciting. A guy that's been wrestling... Well, well, probably close to 20 years, if not more, right? Uh, uh, he deserves that contract. That guy's uh, that he's another great performer, man. I love that guy. Yes, he is. Yeah, uh, we're gonna see Jade Cardinal, Layla Gray, and tag team action. And Jungle Boy Jack Perry takes on Ethan Page. I really like that program, I like both guys a lot. So, yeah. and we've got Dynamite next Wednesday, Brian Danielson, uh, Brian Cage. That's all I got so far. And don't forget, Honor Club uh, is airing, will be airing, is it tomorrow that it's airing? The uh, Jay Briscoe um, uh, tribute? 
I think it's tomorrow, but I will do my research. Um, yeah, I'll put out an we'll update on this. Yeah, I'll put out the update on social media. So keep an eye out for that, folks. Uh, besides that, anything, Marcel? Do you have anything that you want to throw out there? Just uh, if you want to send, send any questions or anything, just uh, contact me at Showtime Marcel. <laughs> if you want to contact Rick, you contact at the Rick Del Santo, and uh, I will be back. And we'll talk about professional wrestling. Yes. Uh, without that, uh, well, y'all have a nice week. Take care.